Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video, we take a look at the comic book storyline, Batman, the curious case of the Catwoman's coincidences. The Curious Case of the Catwoman's Coincidences is a single-issue story published in Batman 266 in 1975. The writer was Bat legend Danny O'Neill, and the penciler was the underrated Irv Novick. So in this one we find Selina Kyle, aka the Catwoman, captured by the law and aboard a train headed for prison. Through sheer dumb luck, a caterpillar tractor accidentally rolls down a hill and crashes right into the train, allowing for the prisoner's escape. Batman immediately proceeds to round them up, however, as he too was a passenger in the guise of Bruce Wayne. Catwoman gets away though, as by pure coincidence, a former associate of hers just happens to be driving by and picks her up. The feline fatale then reassembles assembles her old gang, and wastes no time in setting up a jewelry heist racket. Meanwhile, Commissioner Gordon sends Batman to investigate an unrelated jewelry crime spree, and naturally the Cape Crusaders' investigation collide with Selina's new criminal venture. So yeah, this is a pretty odd pick to do a video on, a random one-shot from the 70s, but I figured it would be fun, mainly because it gives us a look at the Catwoman of old. Now, a lot of people have basically scolded me for even calling Selina a bat rogue, because she isn't a Batman villain, she's an anti-hero and a character in her own right. Sure, that's now, but it hasn't always been that way. This story perfectly showcases a Catwoman who's a full-on villain. There's nothing anti-hero about her here. She's not even a love interest for the Dark Knight, as there are no romantic feelings between the two at display here. This is the old classic Catwoman, a costumed lady mobster who runs her own gang and pulls off capers. That's pretty interesting to see now, as these days we're used to Selina being either a cat burglar and the ultimate loner or an ally of Batman. This depiction is kind of foreign to modern Catwoman fans. It is actually one of the last appearances of the so-called full-on villain Catwoman, as a few years later writer Len Wein had Selina reform and enter a relationship with Bruce Wayne during his stint on the Batman books. I guess you could call this comic one of the last pieces of a bygone era. So in the story, Catwoman is simply motivated by greed. She wants shiny trinkets, basically. And it isn't exactly a rounded or awfully interesting character, but more of a flat, walking cat gimmick of a rogue. There is one small bit, though, that gives Selina some depth. And it's in the beginning of the story when she and the other prisoners escape the train. As she wanders away from the site, dazed from the crash, Selina debates whether she should actually turn back and surrender herself to the law. Apparently, she had intended to serve of her prison sentence and go straight, but this is ruined when by sheer coincidence her old accomplice comes driving by. If it wasn't for that random luck, or bad luck actually, Selina might have reformed. That's an interesting aspect of the comic, but it's never addressed ever again unfortunately. It's a pretty common trait of a character to want to turn over a new leaf. Batman often did try to lure her over to the side of the law, and in the 50s she did in fact reform for a brief while. This story also established that Catwoman isn't a killer, just a thief. So while she is a full-on villain, she isn't really evil. So the big theme or gimmick of this comic is coincidences. The entire plot is built on them. It's kind of interesting actually, as it feels like Denny O'Neill is making fun of the old over-reliance on coincidences in fiction. Many comics, especially back in those days, did use them too much. And it's lazy writing really. I often find it annoying when a story is comprised of too many coincidences. So this one where they're done on purpose and in a parodying manner was pretty entertaining. There's one bit I've gotta mention, and it's when Bruce dresses up in drags to act as bait for the jewel thieves. He disguises himself as Bertha Carrington Bridgewater, an elderly wealthy socialite from Texas, complete with a southern drawl. You don't really see that anymore in Batman comics. It's like something straight out of the 60s TV show. As for the artwork, it's classic Bronze Age Irv Novik, and you can't go wrong with that. It's dynamic, it's retro, it's great. This comic also happens to feature the return of Catwoman's Golden Age costume, after she had worn a couple of other outfits during the 60s and early 70s. This is even briefly brought up in the story as one of Selina's goons remarks that the old duds are back, which she replies to that they've come back in style. Apparently this outfit was very fashionable in the 70s. And that's a good enough of a reason for me. 
So there you have it, that's a curious case of the Catwoman's coincidences. An okay story, that is however very interesting through its historical value. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.